A few crazy stories for you today, very different from each other at first glance, but part of the same theme, how the mainstream liberal media gets away with unethical and false stories every day. The first story is one of the craziest things you're going to hear. I mean, let me just read it to you. It's from a column written by Leah McLaren, a star columnist for the Globe and Mail, allegedly Canada's leading newspaper, the most reputable newspaper, the newspaper that all the right kind of people read. Just ask them. Owned by Canada's richest man, it's the legacy newspaper that journalists aspire to write for. Yeah, about that. Here's Leah McLaren's column that was actually written, edited, approved, put up online by the Globe and Mail. Imagine how many people approved this and thought this was fine. Now this, as you can see here, was taken from an internet archive since the first version was hastily deleted after viewer complaints. The headline is, the joy and politics of breastfeeding someone else's babies. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, here's the calm, okay? Watching the dispiriting moral fumbling match that passes for a conservative party leadership campaign this spring, I've often found myself reminded of the time I tried to breastfeed Michael Chong's baby. This is a real column. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but here, let me read another quote. The breastfeeding incident occurred at a Toronto house party. It was an in-between sort of evening, neither a rager nor a formal dinner party, the sort of casual and expensively lubricated early evening into night gathering that exhausted people in their 30s with small children tend to favor. Oh, my God. I, I, now I remember why I don't read the Globe and Mail. But, but here, look at this part. I walked into a bedroom with coats piled high on the bed and noticed that in the corner, sitting wide awake in a little portable car seat, was the cutest baby I'd ever seen. On the table beside him was a monitor. I smiled at the baby, the baby smiled back. Now this was a connection. I leaned over and gingerly picked him up and then sat down in a chair to give him a cuddle. So Leah McLaren picks up another family's infant child without their knowledge or permission. Let me keep reading. Somehow, my pinky finger ended up in his mouth, and I was astonished at the strength of his sucking reflex. Come on, lady, said his eyes, and I suddenly knew what he wanted. And I, of course, wanted to give him what he wanted. The only problem was I had no milk. But would it be so bad, I wondered, if I just tried it out just for a minute to see what it felt like? I looked at the baby monitor as if it might be watching me, but thankfully, this was before monitors had cameras. So she, she knew she's creepy. She knew what she was doing was probably assault and battery in the definition of the law. How gross. Here's more. Then slowly, carefully, so as to not jostle the infant, I began to unbutton my blouse. Just as I was reaching into my bra, a shortish man with a navy suit walked into the room. Oh, um, hello, he said in a friendly, upbeat tone that could not entirely conceal the fact that he was flummoxed to see me sitting there with my top half unbuttoned, holding his baby. I see you've met my son. May I take him now? I won't read the rest. She is a gross, gross woman. She wrote this column. Her editor approved this column. This column was laid out on the page by another editor. This column was reviewed or at least glanced at probably by a senior editor, maybe the editor-in-chief. Nobody thought it was too gross or too bizarre. Only when the public reacted with shock was it taken down from the website out of embarrassment. As you, you can see, nothing can be deleted from the internet. Now, my first reaction is that this column was a lie. No one would really be so creepy. And the math didn't add up. Michael Chong, who happens to be a candidate for the leadership of the Conservatives, his children are not old enough to have been infants when Leah McLaren claims to have been about 25. But it turns out McLaren, uh, McLaren was just, just lying about her age, pretending she was much younger than she was when she went full creepy. In fact, Chong put out this brief statement today. Incident happened over 10 years ago. It was no doubt odd, but of no real consequence. Let's focus on the important challenges facing Canada. All right, fair enough for him. But why was the column published? What about it was true and what was false other than McLaren lying about her age? Did McLaren commit a crime there? Has she done this on other occasions to other children? Why did she see fit to name Michael Chong 
and identify the child, why did she drag them into her muck? And why did the Globe let her do that? Does the Globe think her conduct is exciting or titillating or laudatory or something of which their owners should be proud or their readers would enjoy? If you think it's weird, and it is, here's what the Globe star columnist Leigh McLaren wrote a few years back. Home of the week, a worker's cottage built for family life. And, and look at that. She's using her privileges at the Globe and <laughs> Mail to sell her house. She called it the home of the week, if she does say so herself. So the premier journalistic effort in Canada, the Globe and Mail, is really nothing more than a classified ad for her. She can write a column about selling her house. Maybe she'll sell some old furniture in her column next week, and the Globe is fine with that. But she's got the chutzpah to tell us that what conservatives tell you is fake news. Look at this. Leah McLaren, news that's neither true nor fake until you click. <laughs> what? Yeah, let me quote. What if I told you Donald Trump and men like him are finding ways to get inside your head and to affect how you feel, which will, as we know from reading behavioral economics, become how the world is for you and how your friends and future generations to come? What? What? Sister, I, I think you've got some kooky ideas in your head, and I think that was long before Donald Trump ran for office. Donald Trump didn't tell you to sneak into a stranger's bedroom, pick up someone else's helpless baby, stick your finger in his mouth, start to take off your shirt and bring out your breasts. Yet Donald Trump didn't do that to you. How did this freak even get a call? <laughs> well, here, she'll answer that. Here's a column she wrote called, I'd rather be a spoiled brat than a sugar baby. Let me quote. I have benefited from nepotism in the past. My mother, the food editor of this newspaper, introduced me to my current boss at a party when I was still in university. The connection helped me get an interview for a six-week contract filling in for the listings editor, my first real job, unquote. Oh, so you got your job at the Globe because your mom worked there and she pulled some strings for you so so they didn't fire you for selling your home in a column. And they probably won't fire you for confessing to inappropriately touching another family's baby and then naming that family and dragging it into your muck. And, and did you see that headline there? I'd rather be a spoiled brat than a sugar baby. Yeah, how about just being a normal person who has to earn what they have? You're so gross, but so normal in Canadian media, am I right? I mean, remember Catherine Porter, a ne'er-do-well daughter of two accomplished Canadians, her mother, Anna Porter, a refugee from Hungary, a great publisher, Julian Porter, top libel lawyer, and she herself, Catherine, is so average. But so what? In Canadian media, it's who you know, it's not what you know. So Catherine Porter got a job at the Toronto Star as their social justice column, as they have that thing, and like Leah McLaren, turned it into a bit of a mommy blog and embellished the facts all the time. I know this. Because one day I met her at a protest in Toronto, and she asked me again and again to interview her young daughter, which I thought was really bizarre. I don't talk to children. Porter never identified herself as a reporter for the Toronto Star. It was a trick. Look at this headline and the story that she ran the next day. She claimed I actually bullied and harassed her daughter in the text of the article. It was outrageous. And the daughter of Toronto Literati, columnist for the feminist socialist star. I mean, I would have been dead meat. No one would believe me that it was a lie, other than the fact that our cameramen recorded the whole thing, starting with me telling Catherine Porter I didn't want to talk to her kid, and her insisting, and me demanding that she gave me on the record permission to talk to which I don't want to interview a child. And then me being super nice and kid friendly while I indulged the weird mom who insisted I talk to the kid. Here, just watch reality for a minute. This is all on tape. Permission? Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Catherine Porter. I need permission to talk to my daughter, Lila. Okay, hi, what's your name? My name is Lila. Hi, Lila, I'm Ezra. Every night. Do you believe in climate change? Well, it's a, it's a good question. I, I think the obvious answer is yes, because over the course of thousands of years, the Earth gets warmer and colder. Have you ever heard of the ice ages before? Yes. And we're not in an ice age now, right? Are we in an ice age now? So then I guess, and there's been more than one ice age, right? So the Earth has warmed and cooled over the years, right? I mean, if it, I mean, tell me if you have you heard of the ice ages? Have you ever, you know, when the Earth was covered with ice? 
So obviously there was climate change since we're not in an ice age anymore, what right? Do you believe in human, believe in human cause climate change? Okay, well that's not what she asked. I don't know, but you're... What's your science say? Science is about um, the part of the future that doesn't um, get, well, the carbon dioxide. And what kind of car do you guys have? Um, a normal car. Normal car. What, what do you mean by normal? Is it an electric car? No. Well, uh, don't we have electric cars right now? Like, isn't the car of the future here already? Tesla is pretty successful, isn't it? Have you heard of a Tesla? No. No. Have, have, can I ask your mom? Yeah. Have you heard of a Tesla? I won't make you watch the whole thing. My point is, Catherine Porter is a damned liar. She said, I bullied her kid, was rude to her. You could see the truth. I was sort of playing Mr. Rogers there. If you want to watch our whole exchange, you can do that at catherineporter.ca. That's a special website I set up for the rest of time to show the world what an unethical reporter she is, and frankly, an unethical mom. Even the Toronto Star was shocked with her. Their public editor wrote a huge item, two-thirds of a page, how unethical Porter was, and Porter's column was suspended for months until she was hired as the New York Times Canadian Bureau Chief. I'm not making that up. <laughs> yeah, are any of these nepotistic pity hires ever fireable? I mean, talk about fake news. Catherine Porter outright lied and was stupid enough to have lied knowing the whole thing was on tape. And yet she wasn't fired and she was hired by the New York Times and Leah McLaren will probably get a raise or a book deal. Whereas a regular person would have a police investigation for assaulting a baby. So what's my point? Well, my point is the Globe and Mail is fake news. The Toronto Star is fake news but there are no consequences for their lies. And here's my last point. Remember this disgraceful episode of CBC Marketplace, uh, the state broadcaster's investigative TV show that supposedly looks into consumer scams? We're on a stakeout to see what it takes for you to stand up against this. White Pride Worldwide t-shirts. Make Canada great t-shirts, $10. Our actor Mike is selling white supremacist t-shirts in Toronto. Let's support the white pride that this country used to be. One of the world's most multicultural cities. White pride. Are you kidding me? The white revolution is the only solution. Let's make Canada gray again. Would you like one? The CBC is discussing what you watched there was an excerpt from their show where they took your tax dollars and literally hired actors to shout racist things on the streets of Canada and to try and sell racist white power shirts to Canadians and entrap them and sting them. So instead of catching scams in the marketplace, CBC Marketplace is now creating scams. There's apparently so little racism in Canada, the state broadcaster has to hire actors to spew racist vomit on our streets. How grotesque, and your money went to that. Oh, by the way, they also stole our intellectual property. We here at The Rebel uh, have hats, Make Canada Great Again, which we've trademarked, and the CBC made counterfeit versions of our hats and sold those two along with their own racist merchandise. That was their way of saying we're racist. Well, our Rebel lawyers wrote to the CBC and they agreed they were wrong, and the CBC agreed to destroy their counterfeit merchandise. So they're thieves. They're liars, they violate intellectual property, and you pay for all of that. How do you like that? Well, even the CBC's ombudsman is disgusted by the CBC. Here, look at this report just the other day. Here, let me read some of the excerpts. This is from the CBC's ombudsman. Marketplace ran a special edition probing the use of intolerant and hate speech in Canada to explore whether there had been an upsurge as there had been in the United States. They used an actor selling white power t-shirts to make the point. The complainant, James Callahan, called it race baiting and completely biased. I don't think it met the definition of race baiting, but the technique was not appropriate in a current affairs program, unquote. Well, of course it was race baiting. In fact, if it were you or I saying what those unethical CBC staff said, we'd be charged with some offense. But even the CBC admitted it was, quote, not appropriate. It was propaganda. It was a hoax. It was a scam. It wasn't current affairs. It was appalling. 20 people complained, including, quote, 
There was a minority who objected to repeating racist slogans in the street and traumatizing people who were exposed to them. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, where's the apology? Where's the anger management classes for the disgusting CBC thugs, the producers and editors and hosts and actors who vomited their racism into Canadian streets with your money? Here's more from the ombudsman. The programmers made a decision to explore who might be attracted to these slogans and to test its prevalence in an unconventional and non-journalistic fashion, and that created a problem, unquote. The CBC's top investigative journalism show is non-journalistic. Yeah, I could have told you that, or as we like to call the CBC, fake news. Here's more from the ombudsman. I do not think that it contributed to a further understanding of the underlying issues, and therefore is not journalistically justified. Last quote from the ombudsman. The mixing of fiction and fact in a current affairs program is high risk. Yeah, you don't say. So what have we here? We got Leah McLaren hired by the Globe because her mom worked there, kept her job there despite writing a column about how her house was for sale. Now she's writing about a creepy, weird incident, likely a criminal incident, and still lying about her age. What a creepy little liar. Catherine Porter, liar, another nepotistic hire, caught on video lying and hired away by the New York Times, of course. And the CBC, which even their own ombudsman, Esther Anken, calls not appropriate, traumatizing, non-journalistic, and mixing of fact and fiction. That's the mainstream media. They are fake news, and they admit it themselves. But no one's been fired from any of these companies. Every one of the people I've just listed are still working. Some of them have promotions. Like I always tell you, you just can't trust the mainstream media on anything. Hey, if you like that, sign up for my show every day. Click on the screen to subscribe.